Association for Dialogue and Affirmation of Monotheism is presenting to you next video. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. We may continue the second part of riba investment, uh, avoiding riba and investing in halal funds. Okay. Do you have some experience which you can share in the uh, US? Um, so um, I've been uh, using um, uh, either cash or interest-free loans from family members, um, like uh, primarily um, uh, before I became a Muslim, uh, because on I didn't want the wealth to be consumed by riba, uh, even though I didn't understand the concept yet. And I didn't see the point of working so hard uh, for something just to <laughs> be paying uh, such a high amount of money for the consumptive cost uh, of the riba as far as on a personal level, but on a, on a moral level, um, I was so angry with the banking system and I didn't at first acknowledge my own sins regarding it as far as consuming the riba that led to my loss and, prof and attempting to profit from the dust of riba that led to my loss when I did have the foreclosure. And it took me some time um, to realize that I participated in these sins that led to my financial loss and uh, to uh, my financial failure and to the loss that I caused my family at the time. And so now I think of it completely differently. Um, Alhamdulillah, I've been guided to Islam and I've uh, have the um, benefit of reading Islamic principles and not only to think about how I can profit, but how my actions are contributing to justice and I'm not contributing to the problems that are happening around me. Um, and so... Um, how do you react to people who say, I have many problems, I don't have a house, I need to take a loan in the bank? Wow, um, I I understand the frustration that they're coming from, but that's I mean I'll, also in my opinion, um, and may Allah guide us all. Um, but that would be like saying I need money, so I went and took a gun and robbed the bank, or I went and took I did a sin, I committed some sin for financial profit. Okay, I'm I sorry, I'm sorry, I need to be their attorney. They say no, it's allowed. We don't do anything illegal. It's everything legal. We just go take the bank. The bank charges us the, the loan, which is normally we say it's uh, something which will imprison you and put you in, in their service. But uh, how do you explain them uh, so, to, what to look for? So in a secular sense, um, then the legalistic definition would be okay in the secular sense um, if they're trying to absolve themselves of guilt. But even if they're participating in the secular sense, by ignoring the principles of the Islamic teachings, it creates um, bubbles in the markets on a secular level. So it, it definitely uh, includes price inflation uh, through that means, and their actions are contributing to the structural enslavement of other people. So, did you say enslavement? Yes, through this through a structural can, sense. Can you explain us more? Because uh, somebody doesn't see himself enslaved in this. Like it's my will. But uh, why he became a slave in this system? Because it allows, because it creates this economic structure that we're all suffering for. So if, if for example, we are at Judgment Day, I wonder in my own mind, and may Allah guide us all, may, no. maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I would think when we're being asked how less than one-tenth of one percent um of the human population could enslave the rest of the human population. What will our, will we sound like we ha even have a rational excuse to our creator when we say, oh, well, everyone else was doing this then, or, oh, well, every, uh, I had to because this small minority of financial manipulators made me do it. But that is say, okay, okay, we will manipulate the banks now. Uh, I will take it and I will run to another country. They, they think like this. But they don't okay. seem to understand that uh, now there is no chance. It's globalism. And... 
Okay, well, in in my opinion, that would be like a shoplifter who steals from the mar- from a marketplace of some sort. Let's say they sh- steal a tool or food or whatever, and then the socialization of the prices, the the markets are just going to compensate for that and say, okay, we're going to have to charge everyone else a higher price for that. And instead of creating an ethical alternative, and instead of participating in an ethical alternative, so because the we are Islam, uh, like because uh, the sign behind me, Islamic principles, we need to stick to the principles. And what's the um, ethical principle here? Uh, please acknowledge. Okay, so we're um, we wouldn't be participating in the. Consuming riba um, is perpetuating that that structure, and so our short term convenience in that aspect would it, uh, enables the structure to enslave everyone else. It makes it to where it's commonplace for the entire structure, because instead of standing up against that immorality, yeah. we're part, we're participating in it. Many of if the public could. scholars are uh, forbidden even to have a uh, bank account because they are using riba, and I understand this, but I don't think they they live in a situation when people cannot get uh, their payment, they cannot get anything salary if they don't have a bank account. So how to avoid this in modern society when it's cashless and becomes very dangerous to don't have a bank account? You're maybe you end up in street and. Not using cash. So, okay, here even in the United States, we cannot transact um, for a lot of things just with even paper dollars. Um, they, uh, for example, if you brought two hundred and fifty thousand dollars <laughs> to an escrow company to say I want to buy this house, they're going to take the money and they're going to have the FBI come and talk to you and make you prove that you earned the money legitimately, paid taxes on it legitimately, everything like that, it becomes prohibitive to where... It's the same, the same everywhere, I think. Yeah, so, so w- the bank accounts and blockchains are similar in the sense that they are wanting to show like the history of how the person earned that money um, legitimately or illegitimately. Uh, and they do it as a control for the population. Um, the flow of and money. The flow of money and to prove that you have the money legitimately in your account. Um, or if you didn't uh, earn it legitimately, at least you paid taxes on it and then they don't care. So <laughs> so maybe but maybe the money... If you do it by a letter, you can use lose the letter because now the system is checked everywhere. Even you cannot do the cash in regularly across the states, only in, in the state between some workers, I don't know. Right. And so, um, uh, inshallah, if we start with what we can and we... So we don't allow the system to get more oppressive in this manner, but we would have to, by taking uh, accountability on a personal level for our own actions so that we're not making the situation even worse in the structure that we live in. And then if we do that and we're taking the moral responsibility wherever we can, then we can work on changing the policies um, and changing the businesses and creating alternative financial structures to where we can do that in an ethical manner to do it the halal way. Uh, it's interesting, I'm sorry, because you mentioned uh, we can do it, and uh, there is a notion in Islamic uh, guidance that if you don't have something with you, you cannot trade with it. Even the money, if you don't have the money with you, it's very uh, discussable. How can you trade uh, like digital money, digital currency? It's a different topic which we can open in our next res- sessions and the dangers which uh, are coming from that side. But in ethical manners, how can we sell something which you don't have? like uh, drop shipping and this kind of stuff so so there are many questions which open and hopefully inshallah we can develop in it i see your reasoning and but we need to have some way out of this like you said on, on the personal level and what's the next level which we can ours uh i don't know do you, do you see the society changing in this um Right now, I actually see the society getting worse than this because most people don't see a feasible alternative. And so I think it's really important for uh, 
uh, people like us who understand what our responsibilities are, we need to work even harder and we need to face the difficult situations and do what's morally right so that we can show other people how it can be done like and so we can use our personal experience um in order to do that and then at the point where we become financially stronger then we can be the uh then we can create the financial alternatives uh to the challenging situations in the markets right now great but uh, the thing is the people cannot change like you said uh, because the society is pushing them towards uh, because they they have the lows and everything and they say cash the society uh, riba based society they say that you have to be in some connection with the state and this is riba the the first connection which you, you cannot outflow it because you have to have the social security number you have to have everything so what did, what are your thoughts about this okay okay i understand what you're saying i also have to have my social security number or if i started a business my uh ein uh which would be like the social security number for a business it'd be like an employer identification number in the united states and so yes we have we have that connected to whatever uh property or financial transaction that we're doing um and so unfortunately um i do believe that um it that takes us because we don't use gold and silver um or do the trade that we're supposed to do on an ethical level and we're using the fiat currency which is the um it you is buy gold and silver to have in your property now you can buy gold and silver in the united states and you can keep it physically but no one transacts with it so people would not even be able to understand what the goal i mean it would be like going to an extra layer in the transaction um in order, like, let's say I wanted to say I want this amount of gold or this amount of silver to exchange for um, a piece of real estate or a house, for example. Um, it, it um, it's not common. It's not commonly practiced. In fact, I've never heard of it being done here in the United States. Um, and so, it would be ideal to be able to move to transactions like this in the future. Um, but and so. Um, I think what we have to do is act in the system with what we can do right now and then try to move it instead of it being moved worse in the wrong direction to try to move it in the right direction as we're able to. Can the, um, can the community invest now in Palo Alto? Um, of course they can, um, but I people mean, would have... the community which you have, for example, in Oregon, can they invest in something halal and they keep it like they're a community is there any way to do it so um right now i think that uh as individuals in the community yeah. i don't i don't think that we have a large understanding of what we can do as a community versus as an individual so i think individuals evaluate what their options are in the markets here in oregon or in the united states in general but there's there is a um i think that we would be in the learning stage as a community in oregon um or there might be some experts that are individuals but it's not widespread throughout the community and we're not um uh, we're not networking like other religious groups um uh to the extent that they do where they're building their communities up i think that we need to I mean, first, as we're learning, we're doing it as an individual and then try to spread that to success by networking with other people in the Islamic community. Um, like there's certain gr uh, other religious groups, whether they're, um, I just won't say the names, but there's certain other religious groups that network with each other and they create strong business alliances with each other. And I think that we're in the learning stage in the Islamic communities in Oregon and in the United States in general. Uh, we should mention to the listener, to the people who are listening to our podcast, that using debit card is preferred, not credit card, because credit card immediately put you in some uh, loans and uh, interest-based. Also pay off debts quickly, so so you don't stay like you are looking for months and months to pay off, because there's al always a chance they use your money to lend, to do some interest-based also avoid interest-bearing accounts, use checking accounts of non-interest-bearing saving accounts. 
seek guidance from the scholar, financial advisors, consult Islamic scholars, financial advisors. Uh, there are some ways which people can earn. I, I think you already know about this real estate investment. What can you say about this? Um, so we do have a structural corruption with the fiat currencies, uh, especially the U.S. dollar. And so every day that we hold on to a U.S. dollar, we know that it loses more and more value um, because of the system of usury and re or RIBA that we have uh, in the United States. And so um, if we don't use it for a productive, for something productive, and we just hold it, um, because it's currency and not money, it loses the value to inflation, and we will lose it through this uh, unofficial tax called inflation. Uh, so if we put it in real estate and we look at real estate that is undervalued or real estate that has the potential to gain value um, through forced depreciation, like let's say we fix up a house and then it's worth more money because we fix it up, well, that's an, that's an ethical way of building wealth. If we do it through um, specu just speculation, my personal opinion is that it would not be an ethical uh, form of wealth. Uh, but I'm sorry, uh, you said speculation on the renovated house or speculation in the in the market. Oh, speculation in the markets. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so if we just uh, um, so if people choose to use um. Uh, like you could you could ethically buy it as a hedge. Like it, let's say you're earning a substantial amount of money through whatever business that you have, and you don't. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily have to do forced depreciation. You could just buy like properties uh, that would rent well, or and and in that sense, you'd be providing a service to the community because you're you would be in a strong position financially. You wouldn't have any debt. You wouldn't have that financial uh, risk, and so. You, you would be solid and you could rent at a market rate or below market rate as a form of sadaka and as far as contributing to market stability. So I think that would be ethical. But uh, on the other level, if someone uh, is using um, where they're not participating in the ethical way, then they would be contributing to market instability, to price bubbles, um, and making the entire structure more difficult for everyone else in society and that's and that's what this does i i know that you have great experiences and i want one great example in your history when you, success story about uh, investment and without riba so people get to know how it's good how is a successful story from the start to end okay so one house that i uh, purchased in the past um uh, after uh, my negative experience with Reba, and I wasn't a Muslim yet, but I just did not, I didn't want the banks to profit off of me. And I didn't want to put myself or my family in that level of financial risk. And so I chose to buy something small that I could pay, pay for cash. And it took me, it took me about three years to earn and save that money to do so. So, and I could have made the excuse at the time oh, I need to buy this. I need to go to uh, a bank or some type of financial institution that gives me a loan. And I could have made any excuse I wanted um, for Reba, but fortunately, alhamdulillah, the, the pain that I experienced from the financial loss that uh, I committed upon myself and on my family, the financial loss and the mental devastation it did to me and the mental pain that I experienced from it at the time, I, th I thought it was terrible. And now I realize that that is the greatest thing that could have happened to me so that I will never commit that sin again. <laughs> and so it, um, if someone ever said uh, to you, oh, Brian is gaining from Reba or something, you could automatically laugh because you know that the pain I experienced was so bad from the stupidity of my mistake that you know that they would be mistaken in what they say, um, because I would never People put myself. We will, will uh, say that we are stupid if we if we don't work with uh, interest based banks, and so it's the other way around. We have to explain this. Okay, so I actually so once I removed myself from the sin of Reba, 
uh, at least to the best I could. I still have bank accounts. Uh, and so if I, and I asked the banks, uh, okay, I want to have an account, but uh, I can't participate. I can't consume, uh, um, receive or um, witness uh, Reba. Yeah. And, and so if they say, um, okay, we have to uh, give you uh, interest on your money and there's not a way around it. So what I do is I take whatever that amount is and I donate it to some type of a charity if I can't find um, the solution that would just not do it in the first place. Yeah. Am I committing a sin? I, maybe I am. I'm trying not to. I'm doing the, yeah. my intention is not to. And so then I take whatever that amount of money at the periodic times that they pay it to me and then I donate it uh, to something right away so that it, uh, For example, and, uh, there are people who are I don't know, they're paying, paying for electricity bills and their income debts. Also, people should use this money to something which is uh, not in their possession, but they can pay off some people who are in, in debts. And it's, it's a good method. Even we don't get the reward, but we are free of riba. And maybe, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because our intention is to help people, we'll get reward because we are helping people, nothing else. Absolutely. And so, inshallah, sure. uh, it, it, yeah, inshallah, we, with our intention to not participate in uh, in that sin, um, we can make things better in our societies. One, like one raindrop uh, will make the difference, will make a difference very slowly on its way to becoming the river that flows, that pours into the ocean. And so if we take the responsibility with the small things on a personal accountability accountability level, then uh, um, if other people also start realizing this mental concept and they do it, um, if it spread throughout the Uma, it would change the world. And everything that we complain about, or at least that I complain about, I don't know, maybe it's just me complaining about it, but but the effects of colonialism, the effects of capitalism, the effects of socialism, the effects of every corrupt financial structure, every corrupt moral structure, well, if we do what we can, participation on the something as small as a raindrop, if if we spread this knowledge to the Ummah as well, to where every like a, a substantial part of the Ummah begins participating it, in it, um, a huge change could happen across the entire global structure. Um, for example, like Russia used to be a communist nation and it has many challenges, but I believe that they are allowing Islamic finance in Russia now. So if they're allowing it, Okay, that's a that's a great start in that country. That's better off than a lot of things happening in the United States. In the United States, we have very limited options, and we're going to have to do it from a grassroots community based system with some people becoming like doing it intensively to try to create the foundation um, for the alternative financial structures, so that we can get out of the Reba system and that we're not enslaved by it. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned United States, Russia, and some other countries. But the thing is, even the non-Muslim majority countries, they are not accepting this way. You have Albania, we have Kosovo, we have Macedonia in some way, uh, which is not majority Muslim, but there are huge Muslim population. Also in Turkey, also in some other countries, they are trying to to lower the interest rate. But the thing is, how do you, they ask? How do you think, how can this happen? You you don't have interest. They, they don't realize other ways. They are not uh, educated enough. And this is the message from today uh, podcast, which is the danger of Riba, the way out of this situation. And the people should be steadfast and using their knowledge and not to be afraid to tell people we object. We object interest. We object this uh, stealing from banks and from the people. They, they have uh, in here, in, in our country, in every corner, you can uh, get money with ID card, but they can uh, go to your house tomorrow, block everything, take your money, because only for, I don't know, for $300, $500, they're looking for five, uh, five times this amount. Uh, 
And they say, take your money, don't lose your time, you know. Take this money, it's easy money. But people, it's like gambling, you know, they, they, they lose your, uh, they lose your, uh, they lose their life, they lose their stuffs. And they are uh, objectively, like you said, object. Uh, when you say that they are slaves, they become slaves of this. And I, I know that uh, this uh, also have uh, other dangers. When you lose money, uh, you lose hope, you lose, you become depressed, you lose your faith, everything. So if you want to put you in danger, then this, uh, I say, uh, money, which are from the devil itself given, so you become enslaved in, the, in this kind of routine. Your uh, freedom is not to own money to anybody, not just to the banks. But if you have to own it and you have to take it, take it from the person you trust, from the person, from the, from the I don't know, from association which can, we don't take uh, interest money. They say, okay, take it and invest it and we want you to succeed. I know there are less uh, these kind of uh, options, but you have to find it, you have to struggle, and you will be rewarded for this struggle in these times of uh, difficulties. Absolutely. And also, if someone thinks that their challenge is great when they need money for something, it's going to be, multi their problem will be multiplied by accepting that money. So however difficult that challenge is that they believe that they face right now, it will mathematically become exponentially um, a greater problem when they have less options and they have debt associated as well, especially with a loan shark mentality of whoever the lenders are coming after them. And so the, it's, they, will, they will create a much bigger problem for themselves by participating in this REBA. Uh, especially in those extreme cases, like um, going to the corner and accepting money from whoever is offering it. Um, well, those people are doing it because not out of some type of altruism or community involvement or something like that. It wouldn't be as an act of sedica under any circumstance. It's going to be an act of where they are looking to that person as a method of profit and dehumanizing that person as a method of profit. And it, I, I think it would go very badly for that person who consumes that Reba. We have only two minutes state uh, for this podcast, but I, I want to just mention that we know the regulation Islam, where we, we are at war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we take Reba, but there are different opinions and uh, mezhefs and schools of thought, some of them. It's not most of them prohibited. And uh, they said about dangers, but there are some scholars which allowed in special circumstances. Uh, we want to rethink these people who are minority in this, that uh, we have to say that guidance is in the Quran and we know the danger of riba. And we have a person like Brian who, who was led to Islam by rethinking his life and accepting the message of Quran which was very strict and very precise to him. So when we have this kind, do you have some uh, last minute words to those people who want to go to Riva? Uh, learn as much as you can, seek the Islamic guidance. And, um, and, and if you're not even thinking about it through the Islamic guidance, think about it on a personal level what do you want to risk for you and your family? What do you want to put yourself and your family through if you make these mistakes? Think about it carefully. In previous times, and even probably now in the modern era, uh, I don't know, but people fought and died for their freedom. Why would you participate in your own self-enslavement? Great, great. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you, Brother Brian, and give you best in this and that world. And may uh, this message uh, be widespread to all people in the world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The danger of riba. Well, alaikum salam. Thank you, my brother. Thank you.